How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again and we are back in Blender. This is a tutorial I've been wanting to do for a while and someone actually asked not too long ago about it. So I decided to go ahead and try it today. And that is how to make custom 3D items in Blender for your Minecraft animations. So as you can see, we're started up in Blender here and this is the basic default screen you would get. We are in the new 2.79. Uh, version of blender. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is change our rendering engine to cycles for this tutorial Anyway, maybe we'll come back and do another one for blender render But for now we're gonna do cycles. We're gonna go ahead and delete the cube And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go up to file and user preferences If you already have this enabled then that's fine But if not what you want to do is go over here to add-ons. We're gonna type in images and they have this images as planes add-on. So we're gonna go ahead and tick that and turn that on. I'm gonna save my user settings. If you wanna keep it, then you can do the same. Then we're gonna close this out. And when you have that enabled, when you go to shift A to add, then you can see in the mesh here, we have image as planes or images as planes. So when I click on that, it's gonna bring up our file browser. And what I'm gonna do is just navigate to where I have some Minecraft textures and import one. All right, so I've gone to where I have Minecraft textures and what we're gonna do is find something as an example here. This should apply to just about anything you want, uh, but we're gonna try to use something somewhat universal. Maybe a ladder? We'll try a ladder. Gonna import that. And as you'll see here, we get this little plain looking uh, thing here, but what we're gonna do is go to this down here and change our viewport shading to material and there you go you see that dang old ladder right there i'm going to go ahead and move our camera in if you're curious about any of the things that i'm doing right now i suggest checking out my beginner's guide or getting started with minecraft animation and blender series i will try to have a link in the description for that if it's not there then be sure to let me know and i will try to update that all right so here we go this is our ladder thing and we're going to hit r to rotate y to constrain on the y-axis negative 90 and we're going to just flip that down so that we can work with it a little bit easier and uh one thing i want to go ahead and note here let's go back into this i'm going to hit f12 to render and that's what our ladder looks like right now unfortunately so let's go ahead and fix that so uh we're going to go up here we're going to drag this down we're going to bring ourselves to the node editor and this since this is selected these are the nodes that comprise the texture we have here for this and what I'm going to do is this little bit right here that says linear I'm going to change that to closest and then if we render again there we go we should have the uh, thing that we want I don't know you know some of these blender things you know sorry if it's confusing but that should hopefully get it sorted out for you and uh, you just do that for anything you bring in and you should be good to go hopefully uh for any save for any uh unforeseen issues but anyway you have this and there's your custom item and whatnot but uh it's just flat you know you may want it to be 3d so there's a few different ways you can do this one way is you can actually go into edit mode by hitting tab and now we're in edit mode and you can see that this is just a plane that has four vertices on the corners like that uh, so you would need to subdivide it. So if you hit, let me see, let's go ahead and hit A to select all, hit W, and then you can go to subdivide, and then that'll put lines in between these and give us extra vertices here and whatnot in the center and stuff. Uh, and then I can hit AA to select all of those again, do this, subdivide, and keep going until they're all like individual pixels if I wanted to do that. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to do all this, but this will enable you to edit the uh, mesh the way you might want to for even more advanced fun stuff. So you can do that, and then we can uh, get rid of some of these if you wanted to, like select the uh, vertices you don't want, hit X, delete vertices, and then you'll be left with only the parts of the actual ladder itself. This is something I typically do, so, uh, you know, it's really up to you how you want to do it. But one quick way we can do this, if this is how you want to go about doing this whole thing uh, as is always with blender there's multiple ways of doing things this is just kind of the way i've experimented with so uh, bear with me if this kind of is flowing a little bit weird anyway i'm gonna hit the c key on my keyboard and you'll see we have this little box here and when i click this is allowing me to drag and select vertices just like so so i can do like this select all these just go on down this line technically you can select this a little bit differently again multiple ways in blender uh, this is just one way you can do it and if you accidentally select one you don't want just hit the 
middle mouse button and that will deselect uh, any of them that you didn't mean to actually select. And if I scroll in and out with the middle mouse wheel, then I can make that smaller. So that should be all of the ones I don't want. Oh, one right there. All right. So that should be it. And I can hit X. Oh, wait, hang on. I have to right click to get out of that. Sorry. And I can hit X and then we're going to delete vertices. And those are those little points there. Whoops. And uh, delete that. And then you'll see, let's tab back out into object mode. Then we're left with just this part of the mesh. That's the image that we want. And we're good to go. All right, guys, so now that we have this set up the way we may want it to be, with just this being our object, as you can see, just like so, uh, what we're gonna do is try to add some thickness to it to make it 3D. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that, and uh, we're gonna cover a couple of them, and there's gonna be a little bit of a problem we run into, so bear with me. But uh, anyway, what we're gonna do first is in uh, object mode, I think you can probably be in edit mode as well, but just for the sake of ease, we're gonna use object mode. We're gonna come over here to the wrench tab, we're gonna click on that. We're gonna to go to add modifier and we're gonna to go to solidify. So if I click that, we can come down here and then you can adjust the thickness. So this is the problem that I was talking about we're gonna run into. Uh, it's pretty annoying. I don't know if there's a quick fix for it, but we'll get into maybe a potential way to do it. Uh, we're gonna make that point 0.1 and this is how you can make that 3D automatically uh, with no real effort involved. All right, so what we're gonna do is the other method now. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this modifier and then we're back to our little 2D little ladder thing here. And we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode. We're gonna go ahead and hit A to select everything. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna hit E to extrude and we're gonna bring it up. That's gonna be about 0.1 uh, just for this example here. And that's how you can get that thickness just like that within edit mode, you don't have to use the modifier or anything. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Really, uh, the main thing here is that it creates more geometry. With the solidify modifier, uh, I don't think it actually creates more geometry. It kind of creates a ghost of it or whatever. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how that plays into the end game of making you know renders and whatnot, but this way actually creates more geometry for your mesh. So it actually kind of literally exists uh, anyway. You can apply modifiers and it would do all that, but we're not going to go down that route. That's a whole other thing. Just kind of giving you the information there. Anyway, so as you can see here, we have our 3D ladder, but this is not working out well for us at all. And uh, this is something I had to play with to try and figure out. In the past when I've done this, I don't recall having this issue so much, so I'm not exactly sure what causes it or what might be an easy fix for it. But basically, I'm just going to show you the rundown of how I discovered what the issue is. So uh, let's come over here. We're gonna drag this down to make a new uh, work window, work workspace. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go to the UV image editor. And this is where you see your final render usually. But if I come down here and I say, I wanna see the ladder PNG, then what that does is it shows us the texture we're using. And since we have all of these uh, vertices selected here, it actually shows you the vertices on the image and how they're being mapped onto your mesh here so like for instance let me go ahead and click face select mode by this down here and you'll see that now we can select faces uh, let me see if i can click this to make that solid so we're not looking through it uh, that's this button here just to give you a little quick insight as to what that did if you're not familiar with it if i click this we can see through to the other sides of the mesh like so if i click like this then it makes it solid so you can't see through it and uh, depending on how you're modeling and things like that that can be really useful. All right, so the issue we're having here, is if I click on this face here, then you'll see that there's the corresponding face on our texture. If I could do like this, you can see the same thing. And if I come over here and I'm gonna hit the A key to select all, and that's gonna select our uh, little selection there. You can also go to face select mode on this and do the same thing that we did here. And you have like the vertices selection, you have edge selection, where if we click, it'll select the edges vertices as you're fully aware clicks on those little things and we're going to go to face select and I can drag this around so uh, let me show you right here if I can there's our area we're, we're, we're messing with and if I have the cursor in this window and I hit G to grab if I drag this around then you'll see there it changes what is being displayed on our mesh so I'm going to undo that and basically what that means is on these areas here if I click this then you'll see that it's on the very edge of the mesh or on the uh, the texture there. So it's not really being selected the way you would want it to. So the fix for this, at least this is uh, kind of a tedious one. I don't know if there's a quicker way to do it. 
Uh, but just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, uh, what I'm going to do is select this. Let's go ahead and just select all these faces on this side, just like so. And as you'll see, they're all selected here. And what I'm going to do is hit A to select all of them. And I'm going to hit G to grab and X to constrain on the X axis. And I'm going to drag this over just like that. And then as you'll see here on our mesh, those are uh, currently fixed. So I can come over here and do the same thing on this side, just like so. Let's make sure we didn't accidentally select anything else. I think we're good. And then come over here and you'll see that those are all selected now. So I'm gonna hit the A key like so. Make sure they're all selected. G to grab, X to move, and then drag it just over into that, and you'll see that those are now solid. Now, uh, technically, what I should have been doing is grabbing these as well and then moving them all at once, but uh, you get the idea, hopefully. So go ahead and select those. Another method we might be able to use, I'm gonna go ahead and try it out on this. We have all those selected the way we want to. Now I'm gonna hit Shift and click on all of these the way we've been doing. So Shift, click, and now all of those edges are selected on both sides that we want to move. And as you can see here, they're all available here as well. So I'm going to hit A to select all. I'm going to hit S to scale, and I'm going to hit X to constrain on the X axis, just like we did when we were moving, and just move them all in just like so. And that should do it for us. And I think that worked pretty well. And uh, that's just a, you know, a quick and easy way to do that. And then we'll have to go ahead and do that for the rest of these on the other sides, like so. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and uh, I'll speed it up. All right, guys, I hopped out of the speed up just to show you uh, another little conundrum that we run into here. I decided to try and select all these faces all at once to make the process a little bit quicker. So we've got all these on this level and this level and this level and all these different ones selected all at once and as you can see they're all here just like we uh, would have normally. Well what happens now if I go ahead and hit A to select everything, hit S to scale and Y to constrain on the Y axis instead of X, uh, then they don't move the way we want them to. Some of them end up the way we want them to be, other ones don't. So what we can do to remedy this and still make this a quicker process than just selecting everything individually is we're gonna hit A to deselect all these. I'm gonna hit B to get the bounding box selection and I'm just gonna click and drag it over this selection. And then I'm gonna hit Y, I mean S to scale and Y to constrain. And then I'm just gonna bring this in like so. And then hit A to deselect. B to box select again, select this level, S to scale, Y, just like so. And uh, that's pretty much how you could handle something like that maybe, and hopefully we'll get good results from this. So fingers crossed. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our mesh and see what we ended up with. And yes, it all looks pretty solid to me. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of, you know, a little bit of an endeavor if you want to do that. But maybe you're not trying to do this with too many things and that's not too bad. Maybe there's a better way to do this. And if you know it, then feel free to chime in in the comments. This is just my, uh, you know, kind of layman's method of getting this sorted out. So we can go back into tab and object mode by hitting tab. Let's go ahead and get rid of that window. And look at there, man. You got a beautiful 3D ladder just like you would see the way you would want to in your Minecraft animation. All right, guys, so we have our 3D ladder, but what if we want to add a little bit more interesting detail to it? Uh, so this is something that's a little bit tricky, uh, but we can achieve some cool results, especially if you're more advanced in Blender than I am, then I'm sure you can do even better. But just to give you a brief rundown of how to add maybe some small interesting details, we're gonna go ahead and tap into edit mode again. And let's just say, you don't want things to just look flat like this. You want to add some more depth to it and whatnot. Well, one thing you can do is just some basic stuff. Like, let's just say we're going to select all these faces here. We're still in the face select mode, as you can see. And I'm just going to grab all of these faces of the ladder rungs. And there we go. Hit the right click to get out of it. And I can hit G to grab and Z to go up. And I can do like this and kind of give the ladder a little bit more of a three-dimensional look there if I wanted to. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of like flat on these edges. So another thing I could do if I wanted to kind of mimic this weird pattern we have here. I don't know if this is what you would want, but just let's say that's what it is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to edge select mode. And I'm going to hold the alt key and 
hit this and that will select both and I'm going to hit alt shift so I can make multiple selections and I'm just going to select all these lines over here these over here whoops not that one undo and we'll just keep selecting all these like so as you can see all those little ends are selected hit G to grab Z to constrain and we'll just move them down like so and then you get this weird kind of you know 3d ladder face thing and uh yeah looks pretty cool to me uh so we'll just go with that and i'm gonna go back into face select mode and if you wanted to give it like some more kind of intricate detail uh let's go ahead we're gonna go back into our circle select and we're just gonna select all these things here like so just select them like that and now we have all those kind of uh joint sections uh, highlighted. So now I'm going to hit the I key and when I do that you'll see that we get this kind of inset. That's what the I key does is inset and it's basically like extrude but we're actually you know kind of moving within the mesh or something like that. I'm sure there's a better explanation for it but uh, we'll just come in a little bit of a ways here and hit that and uh, yeah that's pretty good right there. So now we basically have you know a little square selection within the initial selection that we had and it's new geometry as you can see we created new faces there and whatnot so what I'm going to do now is hit E to extrude and then drag down like so maybe we'll go about 0 0.025 whoops hang on how about negative 0 0.025 hit enter and then we have these nice little inset faces in there you can go like this and you'll see that you have some nice little detail there and it became real easy man you didn't have to do a whole lot i don't really imagine you would want your uh, ladder to look like that but let's just say you did i can also hit g to grab with all those can still continue to be selected uh, that's good english right there hit g z to constrain bring it out and uh, let's just say we'll do this about 0 0.04 enter and then you can have this like that actually looks a little bit better like maybe there's like bolts or whatever that are going in and holding that stuff in place or something as you can see the texture kind of continues you can finagle with the uv map again if you wanted to customize the color of certain aspects of these uh anyway but that's uh you know some basic little things that you can do to kind of give a more unique and personal touch to your meshes and stuff you know you don't have to just stick with the plain minecraft flatness or whatever if you so choose not to just gonna go ahead and do a little bit more here so we do like that we're gonna hit i to inset give it a little bit of a uh little bit of a border there something like that maybe and then we can hit e to extrude it's already constrained and then we can bring this up to say 0. Point, whoop, 0. 0.02 enter and there you go man look at that nice 3d ladder the textures are very kind of you know not working with us the best because it's so much more geometry and no variation to the texture there but anyway there's your example that's how you can create custom 3d items and give it that personal touch you may have always wanted to do who knows anyway this took way too long i apologize for some of the wonkiness that we ran into but blender is pretty unforgiving especially if you don't use it every day so uh, apologies hopefully you learned something hopefully that was helpful to you if you like this video if you want to support the channel then feel free to hit the like button commenting subscribing to the channel if you want to help more directly donating just one dollar a month on patreon can go a long way if enough of you do it so that's always appreciated if not, that's fine. Just letting you know it's there. All right. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.